We all go a little mad sometimes. Be afraid. Be very afraid. They're here. Hi. Hello there. I'm going to be a star, Wayne. <laughs> Lee. And Fuck I'm be me, a Howard. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Nathan, and I'd... Uh, I'd rather not be killed by old people. <laughs> I'd prefer to be in the prequel, which I didn't know there was until five minutes ago. Yeah, old on old crime is huge these days. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And today, oh sorry, and you're listening to They're their here podcast. Podcast. <laughs> A discussion. Dissection. Of all things horror. Fear. I'm, I'm a, a cop. We actually do need to get a, like a little like, sound bite of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> yeah, see, this whole movie could have been avoided if this lady just got herself a nice ear of corn. <laughs> and she just got a... Like the rest was, of us country boys, I'm just saying. Was it Was it Emma that said like it would have been all avoided if she just had gotten herself a vibrator? Just get a dildo. Just yeah, get just, yourself a dildo. Just get yourself a dildo. It's so fucking easy, but that's the thing. <laughs> she wasn't like, Howard, we need to make love. She was like, I need to be fucked. <laughs> You know, Fuck me it doesn't out. need to be mutual. I need to come, bro. <laughs> so we are uh, reviewing uh-huh. X weekend of release twenty twenty. No, not weekend of release, but second weekend. Well, first weekend. Yeah, no, yeah, second weekend. It's right? still fresh. It's still fresh. Um, oh, see what you did there. Huh. That other horror movie on Disney Plus. Oh, oh, uh, and that um, that's the chick from the it's Irish. Chick. The Winter Soldier and some other guy. It's Sebastian Stan remember. and your one from that show about that other Irish couple. It's supposed know. to be good though. The dude from it made gas shorts fashionable. Okay. Paul Maskell. That's gonna piss me off. What's that show called? <laughs> anyway, so we're reviewing X, and yes. I'm just gonna spoiler alert. I fucking loved this movie i i did too i saw the texas chainsaw massacre references and they were ripped (laughs) but you know what okay yeah i just want to say like preface this with i went into this fully happy with this just being another kind of texas chainsaw a la by way of a24 yes but it wasn't that and i'm very very happy with that as well but there was i mean they make a point to leave texas and show us that yeah like i but i think that's kind of a see uh, uh, kind of thing you know yeah but um just the the kind of opening to this where they leave where they are i at first was like are we in the future is this like weird futurism because the oil site looked like a futuristic city it didn't look like like industry or anything i was like there what the fuck is this i thought we were getting a twist immediately Mm. i with this like whole like early 24 hours earlier like kind of opening deal with all of this yeah i'm i personally i'm not a huge fan of that um i don't particularly like like the the macguffin with the axe um you know the bodies on the road not knowing who they were and all this kind of thing when the sheriff shows up mm-hmm. i personally i'm just not a huge fan of that mm-hmm. i would prefer the story to start where the story starts you know because it's sort of like you're resetting your brain yeah. uh, to be like well now it's 24 hours later you know yeah. and then it's you know it's it's just kind of uh it's irksome but like that's honestly that's my only qualm with the movie well, see yeah usually i kind otherwise of otherwise i'll gosh like, all over it <laughs> i'm like what are you gonna show because at mm. first we saw somebody dead out in the front yard so in my mind i was like okay somebody's gonna die at the front door yeah but also I think so much happened between point A and point B Mm -hmm. that I kind of forgot. Like, it was weird. I kind of turned my mind off in a good way Mm -hmm. for this movie. Like, it wasn't just kind of brainless watching. Like, it actually is very kind of, um, very well written. Written by Ty West, of course. Kind of... Live, laugh, I would say kind of, at this point, genre, up-and-coming master, kind of. Uh, Yeah, I would agree. He's quite well revered. Absolutely. But also, this movie kind of is starring two of my favorite Scream Queens, or Scream Queens to have merged in the last couple of years. We have Jenna Ortega, um, our new final girl, kind of, from yeah. Scream. And She's the in the Baby latest Scream Sitter. film. Um, uh, she was a standout for us in the, new, yeah. in the new Scream, even more so than the, quote, main character, Sam. I feel like they'll continue with her mm-hmm. in the next movie versus Sam from uh, Five. And uh, Mia Goth. 
who we love. Uh, yeah, li- Art uh, cinema darling. Deep, deep friend of the pod. Uh-huh. We honestly, Mia Goth is just. Yeah. Yeah, for real. I gotta say, like, I, I even said this as a thing, it's like, she falls so well into this character, like, I, I, I just, I find her to be unrecognisable. I don't see, um, Zara from yeah. Suspiria. I don't see your, uh, her character from, um, uh, The Cure for Wellness. I don't see yeah. any of that. I see I think that was her this. intro. Yeah. Uh, a Cure for Wellness was kind of her intro into cinema, or at least the horror genre. I feel like that's where she kind of got put on the map. Mm. But yeah, she's become kind of quickly one of my favorite actresses in the last couple of years love the blue eyeshadow For, no but so well. seriously though yeah. and it's the the kind of Farrah Fawcett Fa- not even really Farrah Fawcett I think they're kind, kind of, of basing her curls. on like um, Linda Lovelace from Deep Throat that's uh-huh. like the 70s uh, kind of porn movie yeah um, yeah she's gorgeous in this there's a yeah. lot of titties in this there's some... and there's dong and there's dong we get dong there is some honest to god great model shots I could see honestly wild fox couture like era type stuff Mm -hmm. uh, where like from from like the era like I remember like it's rock and roll but I love it or something like that uh, from it and I can see like uh, you know the Vietnam War. I can see all these references to like uh, the emancipation of women's rights. All of these types of things that sort of come out in these characters that are done very well. And it's not uh, where you get you. It's know, not that '70s show where it's like, I see, get it? We're in the '70s. Yeah, Haha. Yeah. It's not too in your face. Yes. You know, it's not. Um, that's one thing I will take away from Texas Chainsaw 03 is the fact that it's like. Don't try and convince me those people are in the 70s. Mm. Jessica Biel is the most 2003 looking person I've ever seen in yeah. my whole life. But all of these girls and dudes as well, I feel like the this it's just a really, really great cast. Yes. Because it's they're solid together. They're perfect for horror movies, but they're also not like dumb as fuck. You know? It's like actually kind of it doesn't seem so like such a MacGuffin that these old people do what they do. Mm-hmm. Like everything is played out very well. And we have it set up that Howard was in the Korean War. Yes. That kind of makes sense, you know? I love actually that kind of like back and forth play between him and Kid Cudi. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, Kid Cudi is in this movie. Um, he also produced the movie. Really? Yeah, his, um, <coughs> I think it's Solo Dolo is his production company. I like uh, copped that at the start. <coughs> and then also he's not billed as <clears throat> Kid Cudi. He's billed as Scott Miss Cudi because that's his name. <laughs> Cough one more time and I'll <laughs> kick you out. Well, actually, considering is actually the first thing, ironically, that I thought was um, uh, how this could have been a better pot- plot line for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. But then it would have just been another Texas Chainsaw. No, but do you know what I mean? Like, the great, the whole, like, having them doing the porno and, like, renting out, like, the... Well, it kind of is, the, if you the, think the, about the, it. The Leatherface estate and just being like, oh, fuck, we've stumbled across him. And that, that would have been a great plot line for that. I don't well, think they so, didn't go for that. They went they for did some that, it makes SJW sense that Leatherface bullshit. got away from where he was. It wouldn't yeah. make sense for Leatherface to still be there, you know, to still be at that house if everything's transpired the way it did. Mm. But there is a kind of weird commonality where it's like these people are here for entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, and um, it's, it's weird. It's, this could very easily be like an exploitation movie, and it kind of is, but it's like you don't feel bad about watching it because yeah. everybody's into it, you know? But also, it's just a great kind of insight into kind of what I think A24 prides itself as, which is like indie art house cinema, and we have kind of a meta commentary on that in this movie because yes. they are also making art house <clears throat> cinema. You know, um, again, that's kind of where the Linda Lovelace kind of Deep Throat thing comes in. Deep Throat was kind of the the movie that kind of made porn kind of, I don't want to say like classy, but it made porn like kind of mainstream and it Elevated wasn't so it. like, exactly, yeah. And we have that with um, the cameraman character. I actually want to see what his name is. He's the only one I don't remember. Well, actually, like speaking of A24, like <laughs> whatever, you, we've said this countless, countless times on this uh, channel. But oh, Mad Solar is the production company, sorry. When uh, A24 slaps its name across something and it gives its, like, you know... Take my money. (laughs) It's literally the epitome of Fry saying, shut up and take my money. Yeah, literally. Um, It's a slow burn, generally. It has, uh, like, (laughs) literally, I can see... The um the the producers and all this like going up to A twenty four like literally signing the contract is it a slow burn? 
cool, sign on the dotted line. Um, it, like, they generally have that in their contract when, you, when they're putting it under and their name. And it wasn't, it was weird. This is uh, A24's first slasher. Yes. Which I think, like, I, it's weird. I think people are starting to come back around to slashers now and mm. kind of appreciate, or at least kind of be on the, like, the wave like I've been on in my head where I'm like, slashers aren't trash. Like, they're really well made. Absolutely. You know? It's like, um, I feel like you don't need a Marvel budget to make a good movie yes. and that's kind of exactly what this whole movie is about is like a look like we all want to make a good movie and uh, there's no they're not kind of they're not making fun of the porn industry at all they're not um like everybody is into it yeah you know and then the one chick who isn't into it jenna ortega i'm just gonna refer to everybody as their like real person yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys will know who i'm talking about um jenna ortega is kind of like they call her church mouse which i really really like oh i love that but um she's kind of a quote-unquote prude you know it's like she's the minority in this situation mm -hmm. so it's like you're you're judging the judgy person you're not judging the people who would typically be judged yeah and then at the end she comes around to it you know mm. and and then it's the other guy who's actually making the porno film that has the problem with it yeah and yeah. i actually like that little dynamic because he's boyfriend. like he's like it's different when it's on camera because it's on camera we're just making a movie mm. and then she kind of is like you don't say. <laughs> she then kind of like switches her mind open, like wants to actually go and be in the movie, and mm. he has like such a huge problem with it. And we actually went to go see this with Emma and Ashling. Um, Shout out to you guys. And they they were kind of of the opinion that she was an asshole for that, and because she's cheating on her boyfriend, it's because because it's different. It's not that she's just a friend that want, decided to do porn. He's not mm. pissed that she's deciding to do porn necessarily. He's pissed that she wants to sleep with another guy. Mm. And it's just like, well, I'm going to do it either way. You know? But then also just break up with him. Yeah, she, he, I, I will say that I, uh, it was Wayne, right? Discount. Um, when is the, when uh, is the producer? When is, oh my God. Discount man, Matthew McConaughey. That man has my um, heart. Slash Woody Harrelson. Slash Woody Harrelson. But with a yeah. whiter face. <laughs> if Woody Harrelson and um, Matthew McConaughey had a baby and then somebody hit it in the face with a frying pan. Is... <laughs> Because both of those dudes are very narrow in the face, but this yeah. guy's got a nice... Oh my god, this man is so beautiful. Is is he Human Chair of the Week? Yes, undoubtedly. I'm just going to let it play. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I was like, I turned over to Ashling at one point and I was like, I bet I see that man's penis in this movie. <laughs> we don't, but we get like... We get a shot of him in like tiny little, little tiny whities. Tiny whities yeah. Oh my god, he's so beautiful. Can I just say that's actually something that I was wondering um, how how far a film literally called X would yeah. go with uh, a obviously there's fucking. The, there's fucking there is the pornography side of it, and then there's the just uh, the the plain nudity side, which I mean like as as in nudity within just the film as itself, is. just yeah. as is. And I literally wrote this. It's definitely pegged itself with riding the line uh, so of an eighteen of what an eighteens movie or an R rated movie can do. And they're I mean they are making porn after all. Uh -huh. So like I I went in expecting more, I guess. Than, I don't know but like, what else though. No, but you can't I, just show porn. Yes, I, I know, but they definitely like there's, there, there's, there's laws in there's place. there is a line where, uh, but they didn't cross it. You know, but they were saying, definitely but they, can't, though, they were straddling that line. Otherwise, we would have had to line. see this in that little theater just by Houston Station. We would have yeah. had to see it there. <laughs> but um, because it's not a porno, it's a movie about people making porn. Yes, you know. But we got penis, we got ass, male and female. I love that shadow. Um, we got yeah, we of got your man's full dick. frontal. It of, was hilarious. Uh, of your man. Kid Cody, but we got full frontal of Kid Cody. We got to see like, and I'm suspecting it was prosthetic because it's like, yes, it was, it was. comedically big. It was yes. huge, I and mean, we we yeah. get to see it kind of. I don't want to say in just silhouette, but it's like he's backlit, and we get uh -huh. to see like the full shape of it and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, also yeah, like it, it seeing girl because usually when we see something about kind of this subject matter they kind of portray it as the girls are kind of trapped or the girls don't want to do it or the girls are doing it out of desperation all of these girls love what they do yeah like they're super into it it doesn't feel exploitative at all 
Um, and they're doing it with intention because, like, they Mia Goth's character them. explains that she's like, she doesn't care <laughs> that <laughs> I'm gonna be a star, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care that it is based off of uh, technically self exploitation, but um, she uh, she knows what it is, and she knows that she. At least uh, in the male-dominated patriarchal society of the time, she believes that is her gateway to get to the big leagues, to get into, like, you know, the cinemas and all of this type of thing, which I appreciate because it's a woman's choice to do that. So, like, I can see where that angle is coming from. And I also see, um, the, I call it the Marilyn Monroe knockoff. Um, it's Britney Snow. Yeah, she does. I love. She does extremely well, and like I even wrote it down about the notes about that whole meta commentary that she's they were having. She's business minded as fuck. Is, exactly, Snow is, exactly. She's there to be like, look, like we're here to make a movie, and mm-hmm. that, that's the thing is none of these people are trying to get out of the porn industry. Yeah, these people are trying to elevate the porn industry yeah. to be respected, and I love that. That's the thing is like I don't think I can honestly say i've seen somewhere where uh actresses or sex workers like male or female are depicted in just being like yeah i love what i do I fucking, yeah like i love this yeah you know especially it being 1979 it's the oldest job in the world for real that and fucking selling food i guess <laughs> you know but um yeah, yeah no there, there doesn't ever seem to be a point where any of the girls feel uncomfortable with what they're doing yeah. even church mouse she she asks yo i want to i want to be in it there's no nobody pressures her into it at all. Yeah, like even a little bit. I think even um, she made a point saying like, "Well, no one told her to do it. She wants to do it." Exactly. Like Wayne she tells it. Says it to yeah, exactly. The um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna say that the cameraman who is her boyfriend, he's kind of like, "Look, she's she's twenty, whatever. She's do you love her?" And he's like, "Yeah." yeah. And he's like, "Well, look, she's gonna do this whether you like it or not." Exactly. So you either get on board or you leave it. Yeah. You know, and I like I like that. You know, but there's also. It, this didn't feel like a like a girl power movie where it's like a you go girl yeah. it's just like everybody is just like they're there, there. together exactly they're doing and it. It, it's not like the kind of typical porn setup where it's like um like some girl like in a fucking like in a studio like on the fucking casting couch or anything like that it's like all these people decided together like yeah let's go yeah. make a movie yeah yeah you know and they do i and i i honestly i love the kind of camaraderie that they all have together um it feels very natural uh what they have as a collective unit of friends yeah there's good chemistry yeah and they like, don't seem like the regular horror movie like nobody's the stereotype. asshole nobody's the yeah. slut you know nobody's mm. the the druggie whatever everybody's just people everyone's just there they're there to have a good time and i don't believe they die for those sins either i think like even though no. this is 79 i don't think we're going by old school slasher rules well you see i mean the, 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 the old granny thing. is like she's just as, she's yeah. just as like uh, well she's just, what, I think just as bad she's just as horny as they yeah. are so like she's killing for that reason yes if she's that killing, makes sense she's killing to get off <clears throat> spoiler alert kind of <laughs> so this movie is weird for an A24 movie it's also very plain that's not an insult it is very much so just kind of your classic slasher <clears throat> which at this point feels fresh <clears throat> because they're not trying to they're not trying to make it something bigger or elevated horror which is like kind of an insulting <laughs> like title which basically is like you're putting yourself here and other horror is down there yeah. you know I'm like well no it's like this movie is the perfect blend of like trashy kind of shitty exploitation movies (laughs) but again it's like all of that is uh, like we say that just to kind of tell you exactly so you know what exactly what we mean you know it's like made for two fucking quid but um yeah this is like a perfect intersection of modern horror and slasher and to be honest in the last year or so honestly since scream and halloween and stuff like that i'm like the slasher is like Coming back. It's reigning victorious. Like, yeah. it, she's coming back as king. I do think what was... <clears throat> what could have been done better was some of the song choices for the soundtrack. Now, not the soundtrack itself. The actual... Like, tell me it's the 70s without telling me it's the 70s. No, fuck that. It's not this James Gunn shit where it's like, I don't want to hear Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. I don't want to hear All Along the Watchtower. I don't want to hear fucking Bowie and shit like that. <laughs> but seriously, though... Like, I'm kind of sick of the same, like, 10 songs just being, like, the song to go to for the 70s. That shit is boring. Yeah. You know? It's like, there was 
fucking thousands and thousands and thousands of other songs and albums and shit that were happening you know mm. like the whole soundtrack for this just sounded like well actually it was just them flicking on the radio and just flicking through I think we get like um, like three or four we songs we get like In I Got It of Vida or something at the yeah, end yeah. and that's kind of or not even at the end during the first kill or no is it no it's Don't Fear the Reaper oh it is yeah 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 but that's kind of the only like one that you would hear kind of over and over yeah. again but also yeah. made me think of Scream I associate that movie with Scream that song? Yeah. I, I always associate that song with The Frighteners. Oh, I love that <clears> movie too. It's at the end, I think. That's a great... If you're sick, you need to get out of here. No, what no, no. What the fuck it's, is uh, this? You're I, I, welling up. I have some like, uh, like really dry throat. I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe I swallowed a fly or some shit when I was driving up here. Ah. Um... I love the fact that he starts with uh, the boyfriend says that it's very possible to make a good dirty movie. Yeah. One is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love this when um, he it's because that's where that uh, when did you become a prude kind of thing comes in. Yeah, because uh, I love that she, she flips that back on him as well. Yeah, she. Uh, I think it's the scene where they're all on the way up. They're all on the way they up. They just they're left the, Texas. They yeah. come into that little strip club. That, so the strip club that they're in, I love that. It's gorgeous. It's like it, it, It's weird. It almost looks like the TARDIS or something because it's so out of context in where they are. It's like this little and it's box. It's a really tiny door. It is. Yeah, <laughs> but the door comes out of a mural, so it's like this kind of a bayou kind of swamp mural, mm. kind of gators and all that stuff. But then it's just in the middle of this like oil refinery and like with all these rigs and everything around. It just looks so fucking bizarre. And I, I don't know why, like, this movie, it, like, makes me feel, like, excited for summer, you know? Because <laughs> no, they all leave and they're like, right, we're going on a road trip, like, yeah. we're getting in. Also, they just have a legitimate reason to be on the road. Mm. Like, you know, like, they don't get stuck on their way somewhere. It's like they actually arrive to their des- destination. It doesn't seem so contrived, you know? As as you kind of would expect from a, a horror movie, it's like everything kind of makes sense and everybody yeah. does like, what you'd expect them to do without being, like stupid about it yeah i think the the scene where uh they're all at that like i want to say gas stop station thing which actually made me think of the new texas chainsaw because it looked exactly like that that stop where they had all the i chainsaw texas t-shirts and stuff I think that that conversation that they have there and what's going on outside, because they were filming this scene where um, Kid Cudi's character is like filling up the oh, gas. I, I and love he, that they correct like, him. She's like, film up from up top and look like he's, he's using his cock. And she's like, <laughs> See, like I know what to do. I this is what I'm saying. That's why I love I actually want to find what's Britney Snow's character. Because she's, she's one of my favorites. She's she's intelligent as fuck. Yeah. And she's also super caring. Baba Lynn. <laughs> Bobby Lynn, I love it. But um She is like she knows her shit. Like she's not just she could very easily be portrayed as like the bimbo or like the dumb blonde one or not. The one that gets like, killed first. Yeah, but she's yeah. like I actually was thinking that the whole time I was like, Who are they gonna kill first? Like who's actually gonna be at the end because we have Honestly I did call it. I thought it was gonna be the guy with the glasses. Yeah, once we start getting into it, it I'm like he's the least kind of valuable also. I feel like he's the, the He's the least that's... developed. He is, yeah. He's the one that we're like not giving as much of a shit about. I also think he might be an unknown. Well, I've definitely seen him before. I've I definitely think seen he, him before. Because he, he looks like a... <clears throat> he looks like a Culkin. Culkin. <laughs> but, but he's not though. He looks like Rory Culkin. Oh, he does actually, yeah. But he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think... Um, the amount of uh, Text Chainsaw Massacre references is unbelievable i don't All know of, no, no no man i well noticed it like I what well noticed it so like besides there were the fact three that things. they were in texas no it was more so the shots so there were three things the first one was uh when um mia goth's character is returning to no yes she's returning from the house after meeting the old woman the oh first the time. palm under the swing shot yes yeah so i saw that and i was like obvious uh, which I love, don't get me wrong, I thought uh-huh. that shot was really fucking cool. Then the second one I saw was uh, when down by the the sort of the lake uh, yes. bayou area, I want to say. It's kind of swampland, but not really. I, I just see it as a lake. It, yeah, it's a lake. lake. It's a pond. Um, which was the uh, shot where uh, the whole kind <laughs> You get comfortable. I'm just um, saying, you coughed like four times. I'm keeping this shit in front of my face. Throat. Um, yeah, so, that's a symptom. 
And I have it. Go ahead. So, uh, when she was walking up the... What do you call it? Like, the, the wooden thing that goes out into the water. I don't know. Like a jetty. Yeah. That. That was one of them. And then, obviously, just, like, the nighttime blue shots in the moon. I think that's was bullshit. Epic. Texas Chainsaw did not invent following a girl from behind with a camera. <laughs> well... <laughs> Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I no. I honestly was looking out for more. You know, I was with, expecting with that. Be, yeah, I was expecting. Oh no, to... the other one. Sorry, the other one was the cows. So when all the cows more. were lined up by the side of the road, uh-huh. and then the bus drove by. Uh-huh. I mean, need I say more? No. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> it was weird. That I think that was the first. Our first shot of gore was the cow. Where they kind of go past it, and we it. see and people like under the tire. Yeah, like it looked like just straight up meat. Yeah. Where and <laughs> because Ashling, Ashling is like kind of particularly in love with cows. Like as am I, but I'm also not vegetarian or anything, so I'm not like freaked out by like flesh or meat or anything. But she fully like she's in dairy though. She literally had an ice cream with her. Vegetarian. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> You were also vegetarian and fucking been eating meat for the last year or whatever like that. Tuna is meat, Nathan. But, um, yeah, Ash, like, oh, she, like, squirmed a little bit, you know? Yeah. But, like, nah, they drive past this, like, just this open carcass. It looked like this cow got blown up from the oh inside. Oh, my God, I love Like, it didn't that. look like it was hit by a car. It looked like it was, like, a chest burster or something. Yeah. Like, it was just blown out. Um, Wooden guts everywhere, all over the road. Gorge. Yeah. I love it. I feel like we're doing a lot of weird setup and haven't gotten to the actual, like, plot yet. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? yeah. So basically, the whole plot of this film is they wanted to, they rent this place to do a porno. Yeah. And I feel like we're going to get a little buddy kind of in here. Try to, like, kill them because I, the granny is horny. But see, I, think, <laughs> I think it's mainly just the. the like the woman I think it's just Pearl because yeah. I feel if they had actually done everything that the husband had said they they might have been fine yeah because he does say like don't just be disturbing over my there. wife and exactly. stay the fuck away he was like um, we value discretion so like just stay in your thing you know mm. but also the thing I noticed I was like why are y'all fucking right in front of the window you know because yeah. they have this little like isn't this he watching kind of them or she's watching them ambiguously sized cabin because sometimes it looks huge on the inside. That was another thing. And then thing. sometimes yeah. on the outside it looks like a shed. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's, it's gorgeous. It's all wood and everything. Fully furnished. Um, out in the country or whatever. But it they looks, kind of... The shed looks better than the house. Yeah, for real. The house is in. gross. The house is, <laughs> the house is full Texas Chainsaw. But like, if only grandma lived there. Like if, or if only grandpa lived there. You know? Um, but yeah, so... I don't know. I'm trying to like blow the glass ceiling off this, but it's like it's still not kind of confirmed. I felt like they were bordering on supernatural in this at times. Or I felt like Pearl in particular was trying to border on supernatural because I'm like, okay, but what is she going to like do with them? Because she's kind yeah. of so focused on youth and beauty. And, yeah. Because uh, I didn't think when she was with Mia Goth, style. I didn't think, yeah, exactly. I thought it was going to be something like that. Because mm. when she was kind of touching Mia Goth and stuff like that, it's actually seeing me get in the trailer of, um, that old woman was touching me in my bed. <laughs> I, I didn't get that as in she was trying to like, like get with her. I took that as just kind of like a, like looking at her like admirably. Like yeah. looking at young flesh, the yeah, feeling yeah. of young flesh. Um, yeah, it's weird. I also think a lot of this is predicated on you thinking that old people are gross. And I, <laughs> and I don't. Sure, I Emma was don't. freaked the fuck out, wasn't she? Emma kept being like, and I'm like it's just an old lady's back or whatever, you know? I'm like, she's just old. Like, she's not the Golgothan. She's not literally a shit. The Golgothan. So yeah, Emma would see a piece of old flesh and literally be like, she just couldn't take, you know? Yeah. I think old men can be sexy sometimes. I will say the cinematography for this film is... I I literally wrote the word lush. It It has sweeping grass shots. It has... The Lakeview shots were just gorgeous. The shots of Mia Goth, like, fully crucifixed in the water. Yeah. Um, uh, And then, like, the tension of that crocodile, like... Or alligator. Oh, it was was a gator. Oh. But Emma, again, this is why I... Like, I actually love bringing Emma to see horror with me. Because she, like... She doesn't try to be brave 
at all. Like Emma will jump, Emma will yell, and Emma will. Like, when we, were to see it, like, we were like grabbing onto each other. But for this scene in particular, yeah, Mia Goth goes out after I think having just filmed a scene because she's wearing her dungarees without the little bandeau underneath, which uh-huh. looks great. I kind of predict that will like be a look. That'll be a thing. Like no joke, I actually feel like this movie will be like good reference for fashion kind mm-hmm. of this summer. Um, I believe that mint will be very big in fashion. <laughs> that nurse in the right has got a great ass. But Bam. like she comes out and she's got, um, she's got like just her dungarees on with no thing underneath. And she kind of like, she puts cowboy boots on with no socks. But then she like strolls down to the, the crick, I'll just say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just kind of gets in. I'm like, oh, it looks so good. Yeah. Like just sitting there. It's like obviously a hot day. And she just like dips her feet in kind of. And then she's like, fuck it, I'm going to get in. Yeah. Because they are just out in the middle of nowhere. Like this is like spawn ranch or something like they're not this like, like you, they're not you, right by the house you won't find another living soul for at least another 10 miles down the road nah. that kind of thing that's how isolated they are on this like, and they have farm privacy site. they you definitely know? it's like do. all they have to do is just not drive up to the house <laughs> 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 but uh, they, they kind of don't even know it is Pearl that like actively goes out and and watches yeah. them so yeah. like I suppose they're kind of fucked either way mm. like they were actually very discreet no I do believe the first time that everything started to go south for them was when they moved into the barn for the second porn yeah like, quote unquote opening, oh because Mia Goth is playing the, the the younger sister yeah who's like milking the cow or whatever yeah and then she's like well why don't you just let my daddy you get angry you won't like that but then they're good like, I'll take care I'll give you a ride because they don't even think the wife knows they're there and then Mia and then Goss she's actually sees her like yeah through the window yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh yeah when they come in oh actually when they first show up to this uh, wine oh my god this man uh, he's <laughs> show, no, seriously though it's like every once in a while somebody will show up in a movie and you're just like fuck yeah he's like 70s hot you know um, he's like a little bit older than everybody bang, else bang, he's, bang, he's bang, Mia's bang, bang, bang. he's Mia's fiance also the producer of the movie yes you know and they very easily could have made him very sleazy and gross and yes. cheesy but he's not he's very he's loving he's caring he's, yeah just like any kind of like and he's also director. right most of the time exactly they yeah. don't they don't differentiate him between being like a porn director or a director like mm. he's just a director and mm. he like makes everybody feel good I think he's even uh, talking to Jenna Ortega towards the end kind of being like fucking go for it yeah like it's no no, no big deal or whatever yeah I love that and like even like he's also like when they're when Wayne's character or when Wayne when Wayne is having that conversation with her boyfriend and he's just like well I don't fucking like this I was like but like you said earlier it's like whether yeah but it's it's not up to you it's like she'll do it with or without your permission I was like but yeah that's 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 there's again that's that like there's that those meta commentaries like, that, like all that do. kind of thing you know yeah which i really did enjoy because like it didn't smack you over the head with no, like this yeah. or that you know they were very subtle they did it very well the dialogue is really good in some of these scenes and yeah. especially the scene where they're all sitting down having sandwiches and beer i love that though everybody's kind of coupled so up good. everybody's hanging out and it, stuff and, and it, they were doing really well like they they put in like i wrote it there um so i i loved the sex positive messages that they had in the film yeah again um, without being so heavy-handed <clears throat> yeah it wasn't and just in that one scene bad. yeah it was just we enjoy sex and we're, not and being it, we can, we're it. making money out of it it's exactly. good we're not being punished and, for it um uh <laughs> in the sandwiches and the beer scene it reveals it's just probing like can i come to yeah you know <laughs> Pearl also pops up like, I want to do a scene in the movie too. <laughs> if she had just asked, they probably, they probably would have been like, yeah, serious. sure, why not? I have a dildo, go for it. <laughs> for real. You know? But um, it reveals a lot of like intentions and motives and things like that behind some of the characters. So like, obviously like the boyfriend is a, uh, like a sort of a, I don't want to <laughs> say. He doesn't get a name. Yeah, like, we're not giving him a yeah, name. He's sort of the like boyfriend. a double standard. Like I'm happy to exploit women in these movies for the name of but art. I'm also not happy with but not my you. girlfriend but not you yeah. do you know what I mean it's good for because um, he even makes a point he's like look she's a good girl yeah kind of implying that everybody else there is kind of a piece of exactly, shit exactly he's not there to make a porn per se he's there to make art house yeah and he just so happened to be able to like kind of making a porn or whatever yeah but um but the other two um like Cody's character and again I forget the Marilyn Monroe 
Snow. Just Britney Snow. Uh, Britney Snow. Just because um, she has short blonde yeah, hair. I know. It's Come like, yeah, on. Marilyn Monroe like, was dead their, by this point. Their dialogue that they have is so good. And yeah. Like, she says, like, They're we're adorable. not judging anyone. We're Like, gay, black, white. Uh, straight, and this, that, that, and the also other. It didn't feel like a. It didn't feel forced. Everybody's included. Yes. It was just like a. He was just like, kind of it on just the feels front good. of liberation at this point yeah. because of the time period. It yeah. felt. It didn't feel so forced. Yeah. You know, it was just like a. It everybody likes sex. Yeah, it just doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't feel like they're beating you over the back of the head with it. Yeah. So, which I love because, yeah, like, I, wouldn't mind I immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I also loved the meta commentary power of independent cinema and I was like oh there's A24, A24 digging in yeah, there I, was gonna say, <laughs> I actually loved there's, see I, I can't stress enough how much I love a good cast when it like yes. it feels like it doesn't feel like people are acting when it just feels like everybody's getting along. Like when uh, when Kid Cody like finishes their first initial scene and he's like having to smoke at the window or whatever. Oh, he's, he's like, like he does the Patrick Bateman and thing. He's like, like, he was like I'm I was, I was born look. for this. Whatever. Yeah, and she's like, I'm a good actress. You know, she's like, you were good. And he's like, what do you mean? And then she's like, <sighs> she does yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. thing, and he kind of you can see that he's kind of like, whatever. <laughs> she's like don't be hurt darling like she calls everybody darling every once in a while and yeah. like, she's like having a little smoky bed and stuff you yeah. know I love how in every single one of those scenes Jenna Ortega is she goes from uh, the scene uh, at the beginning when they're filming the um because uh, it's real character development it goes like right up until that scene where she, she says I want to be in it she's filming a scene she does yeah she they fuck in the yeah, bedroom the scene... as well oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just remember and he, like, he has her... to watch it and he's like Oh, yeah, he feels she... dirty and has to get a shower and yeah. all this. I'm like, oh, he oh. does. I, yeah, I, this is so mean because like, uh, like, men and emotions are like weird. Where it's like we don't like judge men for having emotions. But I remember like when he got in the shower and he just kind of like, <laughs> I was like, don't be such a bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's like you're crying because you're like only half an hour ago, only earlier that day, you were explaining why why it's not weird for me and Goth to have sex in a movie, like yeah. why Wayne doesn't find that weird. You know, because it's not cheating, because yeah. they're just making a movie, you know? And he, like, was all gung-ho for that. And then when his girlfriend decides to turn around and be like, I want to be in the movie, he's like, no. Yeah. I, I, no, I love the fact that he's not like, oh, no, like, I don't think you should. He's just like, no. no. Yeah. And she's like, why? And he's like, because no. And then I feel like that's her being kind of like, I'm well going to do it now. Yeah. Because you're like, you're trying to tell me what to do. Yeah. Like, he's the only one being controlling. You know, it's it's weird. And then, yeah, he's in the shower and he just like... <laughs> but you know what? I love how, like, in each of those three... Uh, of, of the of the four May roles, actually, the, the old man, um, Kid Cudi's character, um, the boyfriend, and then Wayne's character, uh -huh. is you can see the different type of male, like... Uh, yeah, like, like the kind of archetypes. The archetypes. So you like you have Kid Cudi's character who's so sure of himself. Yeah, but he's he not an need asshole. To prove it. Yeah. Then you have Wayne's character who's the domineering one. And kind of nurturing also. Nurturing but domineering. Kind of the father role. You have the boyfriend who's extremely uh, insecure of himself, but but while being misogynistic at the same time. Yeah. And then you have the old man who's just uh, kind of been pushed back because of the years of He's like, look, just don't everything. come over this way. Yeah. Like, look, all this shit can be avoided if you mm. just... And I, even even his introduction where they first get up to the house, he's got the gun. Yes. And um, I kind of was like, where is this going to go? Because, like, I know that they stay on this I thought the so problem might be, them. like, is it Alzheimer's? Does he, like, suddenly forget that they're yeah, supposed to be there? Yeah, I thought they were going to go to the visit, kind of. Yeah. Route, and they didn't. Um, cause the most also... obvious twist that no one fucking saw coming. <laughs> you know what? Again, that was another movie for, like, Shyamalan. I like to just turn my mind off. <laughs> But, no, but like because you I'd, need I'd rather to because fuck me. Well, no, because movies. I like a twist. I really do enjoy a good twist. And yeah. I don't want to, especially for somebody who's known for twists. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go in looking for all the clues. Right, fair. Because I feel like that kind of ruins the movie for you. I mean, like they're still good movies, but like I like having the <gasps> no fucking way. I like having that kind of reveal for a movie. Yeah. You know? But um. Yeah, when he first shows up, Wayne goes up to the door and he just has the gun and he's he kind of like leads him out of the house with it and he's like not fucking loaded you just have to wave it around and people think it Everybody, is. yeah but then wayne stupidly is like i do the same thing i have one in my glove box an empty gun yeah so that's what we like then that kind of fucks me up at the end but i also love that she like is like she hears jenna in the house and she doesn't just get in the van and go 
Yeah. Like she grabs the gun and goes back in and tries to save her, you know? Yeah. But again, it's not too... It doesn't feel like, you go, girl. Which yeah. I also do enjoy in a movie. Like, I love Death Proof because it is just like a It's chick huge female movie. empowerment, yeah. It is. It's just chicks fucking kicking But that's in. also another thing as well. Is, uh, that, that film is also... It's a female empowerment film, but it doesn't beat you over the head with it. I mean, um, they literally beat Carissa over well, the head with it. No, I, but, I, but <laughs> what I mean is, like, um, they're not... It's not so obvious that, like... Yeah, us girls need to band together. It's girl not power. the middle of it's Endgame where all the female heroes pose yes, like this. It's not that. Let's it's just, go, girls. Let's go fucking. What does she say? Let's go kill this motherfucker or something yeah. like that. Like it's 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 just brilliant. I shot his ass and he ran off. <laughs> I'm okay. Zoe the fucking cat. <laughs> <sighs> I want more than nothing to talk about that movie yeah, it's so yeah, badly yeah. on this podcast. Uh, well, I mean, speaking of which, this was something that I think you and I would agree on, that this film feels very Tarantino. Yeah, even Ash said the same thing. She mm. got death proof. Kind of grind- it feels very Grindhouse. Grindhouse, yes, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. But it, it's weird. Not it because of like the pornography part, just like... The dialogue how, and the, the music. The dialogue, the shots, it's period. how things are... Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, also, yeah. I just feel like, because... <laughs> It's like, girls doing coke, titties, it's Tarantino. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get any foot shots or anything. But no, oh my I feel god. Like, I feel like this is the kind of thing that like Tarantino wants to be able to have. It's yeah. like, where you can almost see like a hair in the gate. You know, where yes. like the film itself is, is kind of dirty and kind of grubby. I feel like a lot of directors aspire for that. I feel like one who gets it done well is Rob Zombie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I feel like Rob Zombie like has no problem with like actually using film, so that it's not super crisp. You yeah, know, all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, you I could see a lot of the influences in this movie without it being like a. I don't know. Without it being like, see, see what we're calling out, huh? Yeah, like yeah. they're not holding up a fucking a sign. flashing sign saying this is the Tarantino reference. Exactly, you yeah, know? but like. Yeah, I think it's just a... Uh, they don't have the label, the number of the house as number 237 or whatever. Oh, like, we did... Stupid. No, but we did get... Jenna Ortega smashes a piece of the door out. And I was like... I turned to Ash and I was like... I know, I turned to Emma and I... I was, seen that. I went... I was like, don't fucking stick your head out through that door. And she <laughs> didn't. And she didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at yeah. this point, again, The Shining, mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, that's... Like, we know that. We, yeah. we praise it all the time on this podcast. I'm fucking sick of seeing that shot in movies. Yes. Because we got it in we got it in the last Texas chainsaw as well, where he breaks in the door. But see also it's kind of it's such a simple shot, but it's so associated with the shining. It's too used. It needs to it needs to be It's somebody under the bed. It's somebody hiding in the wardrobe. It's so it's like it's like you're expecting the same uh, carpet design for every horror movie. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's that type of thing. How many fucking hexagons am I gonna see within a fucking hexagon on a floor? (laughs) You know? Or how many times am I gonna see Chevron on the floor? Oh my (laughs) Like I get it, you like. How David many Lynch. times is the blood going to get off the elevator at the second floor? <laughs> How many times is Wendy Torrance going to be stuck in a hotel with her husband and child? <laughs> oh wait, but I did say I actually think I said this last week or maybe just in conversation. I would have loved to have seen Mia Goth as Wendy Torrance in Doctor Sleep because uh-huh. she looks like Shelley Duvall. Yeah, she just does. She's got the eyes, the kind of. She's. I don't want to say she's not, like pretty she's got like a like an odd look but she has that way of uh, expressing uh emotion yeah uh, and i don't mean i don't mean at all that she's ugly beautiful. i just mean like she's got kind of like a non she's not generic looking at all yeah and i think that's why she's a standout for me is because didn't, i remember her look so strongly from suspiria didn't shelly duvall just get her razzie her razzie got revoked yeah yes bitch after all of these years and to be fair I really don't think her acting was that bad in that movie no I also don't think she was acting which, <laughs> yeah, which is yeah. why I think it's so much sad like why it's so sad I think that they finally realized after 40 years mm-hmm. that yo we probably should have made this lady out to be a piece of shit because Stanley Kubrick abused her mm. on set it's true. Um, but like I always say, I think I even said on our like almost four hour long shining episode, <laughs> she's my favorite character and uh I yeah, I love her. Like anytime she's on screen, that's when I'm You know who my favorite I'm character in. in that movie was? Uh-huh. The black girl painting. Officer Bird. No uh, <laughs> oh, uh, for above the T V. Yeah, yeah. They have they have a chef's apartment look like that in South Park. I it's love fully it. based on that. Love it. Like the bed is like 
it's like carved women it's very clockwork orange yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. just breasts I or whatever <laughs> okay so the one thing i really really do want to talk about are the kittles themselves okay yeah let's uh, we uh, yeah we haven't yeah. gone yeah, yeah. We haven't <laughs> so first kill I this was, was like i fucking loved this i was impressed because at first when okay so little bitch, bitch boyfriend wants to leave and he's just gonna take the van uh, yeah, he's, he's fully abandoning them, there. them there. Yeah, yeah, he's out there and he's like, see how they get out of here without me and all this kind of shit like that. And it's like, um, you deserve to get fucked up. Mm. Y'all are in the middle of fucking nowhere. I knew it. As soon as he up and left, I was like, Where's you're the going? first one. Uh, you're the first one to go. Exactly. I called it straight away. I thought we were going to get it in, I thought we were going to get it in the shower though, because we get a psycho call out. Yeah, we do. Um, we get some kind of psycho shot, call out the... just before then. And then yeah. he's in the shower, um, which we also got in Scream 5. Uh, we got a male psycho moment. Um, <laughs> and Amber, I don't actually think I pointed that out on the thing. Her little like, ee, like her oh little psycho God, reference. Yeah. I've actually come around to Amber being one of my more favorite ghost Killers. faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's just whacked. She's, like, just, she's just crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was like, okay, dude, you're out here abandoning your friends and your girlfriend. You know, like you're a piece of shit. Yeah. You're kind of a piece of shit. I literally have the note as jabbed that motherfucker's neck so much she nearly cut the whole fucking head off. I thought it was just going to come clean off because yeah. the neck is just open. Yeah. Like you feel like if you picked the torso up, the head, the head would, would probably just rip off. Just, yeah. Because, But at first, because we hadn't gotten a kill mm-hmm. at all. So at first I was kind of like, hmm. Like, I don't have anything to, like, go off. Mm-hmm. And, like, A24 is usually very good for... They're um, very quiet. For on trauma. Their mum on anything that gives away a lot in the trailers. Yeah, exactly. Everything is very vague. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> actually, the trailer for Men played before... Loved I'm it. I'm so excited I am. S- We're going to talk about that. I'm so yeah, excited for, sure. for Men. Also, huh? I kind of was expecting a Northman trailer. Huh? Because the Northman trailer... The Northman comes out in, like, 12 days. It we're goes doing out in a review. Days. We're gonna go see it first, and then see if it kind of qualifies. You know I'm what? Figuring it could I, I like be... the idea of doing it like a 15, 20 minute review. I don't. Oh, okay. I guess I'll just go fuck myself. Yeah, you sure will. <laughs> um, no, just because I'm not sure whether or not it's gonna be just the Revenant because. True. Because I've. I mean, seen it's the Lion the... King, but up north yeah, yeah. but I've because there's witchcraft in it like mm. Bjork is there as a witch and we've oh, seen she's like, actually on the poster this time exactly yeah. people don't like the fact that she's on the poster and I posted a thing on Facebook I was like honestly I'm happy to have this just be a three and a half hour long Robert Eggers directed Bjork video <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't God. like if nobody else is in it but um yeah just because I don't know where exactly it's gonna go because we've also seen Val- like a Valkyrie and Odin yeah. and it could just be like, like a, witches a manifestation of like drug use or something like that for visions or well, yeah that's what I'm thinking it's gonna yeah. be but well we're gonna go see it anyway and then mm. we'll decide after the fact definitely but um what the fuck were we doing? oh the kill what's okay. <laughs> at first at first Tangent St. James <laughs> at first it's just a little jab in the neck and I was kind of like Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then it becomes it becomes so artful. It's actually a gorgeous theme because mm. she like no pun intended. Um she just goes to town and just makes his neck into mince meat. Yes. But at one point she like lifts up the knife and it's like a small little knife as well. It's not like like that would have mm. taken a while. And she just stabs the fuck out of him. But at one point she like retrieves the blade out and all this blood just goes all over the windshield or all over the, the headlights and she's just red yeah it's that actually happens a couple of times in this yeah. movie where like the lighting is just like <gasps> <laughs> there was more than a couple of times in this movie where i was like yeah this is gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> like just looking at it you know i did i did see uh the the moment where oh. she gets up and she does this sort of like slow uh almost kind of ballet she kind looks of like thing. a stripper in gta <laughs> <laughs> but like this sort of weird thing it's like uh, I, I I almost saw it as like a self uh, a wi- a, a, a wish fulfillment kind of thing so that's why I thought they were gonna go supernatural I was yeah. like because I was like is she gonna become younger when like as she kills yeah. or like what's the tea like what's the crack there um, and I'm glad they didn't I'm glad she's just a murderer mm-hmm. <laughs> She's just an old lady who happens to know when to strike. 
Yeah. That's that's kind of the only thing, and that's scary. And she's that's unassuming because he's like, um, he's like, oh, hold on, wait. <laughs> is this not her? <laughs> <laughs> first again because this actually plays a lot with the notions of how we view old people yes because we're i think they're kind of assuming that you're going to think that old people are meek and kind of stupid and unsexy slow and, and... slow and unassuming and non-threatening yeah and i love that she uses that to her advantage yes because she's like she's just kind of standing in the road like she's blocking his path out and he gets out of the car and he's like oh we need to help you but at first she's kind of like I th- is she naked? No, she's no, not naked. She's, she's got in her nightgown. Night yeah, yeah. He's kind of like, okay, I need to help you, but also your husband was like super clear about leaving not you going alone. near you. Yeah. So he also could have just driven around her. Like she's True. she's at home. Like yeah. she's not out in the middle of nowhere. But um, yeah, he she like lets him get like oh super close to her to try and like help her or whatever. Yeah. I think she even kind of like smells him a little or something. Like she's oh, she kind does. Of, she's she like kind of into it. She yeah. leans in and she smells. And then she him. just eh. yeah. Bleh. Like, just a tiny little jab in the neck, but it's enough to, like, down him. And yeah. he's, like, out for the count. Yeah. But it's so violent. Yeah. It's so good. I, I, I did think I was exactly the same as you when I did see just the one jab. I mean, like, I knew, like, when her hand was, like, behind her back, I knew she obviously had, like, a weapon or something. Yeah. But a of cookies. when... <laughs> she just whips her and like, sewing needles. so I was coming down to say, hey, listen, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to be in your porno. Orange juice condoms. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, love you guys. <laughs> you <are> so young. <laughs> but um, I, I did. I was exactly the same as you when I heard that, ju- or when I saw just the one jab. I was like, oh. I kind of thought oh, I was A24, like, okay, really? maybe we'll find his body later, like a kind of Alice Simon mm-hmm. from uh, Midsummer, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we do find a body later, and I don't know who it is. Yes. So this was something that uh, this was something that was alluded to. Um, in the in the twenty four hours later type thing, yeah. Um, where they go down into the base, uh, the two sheriffs. That was very Texas Chainsaw. Yes. Oh, oh three though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they went down. It was like uh, he. I think he goes like, "Oh, Mother Jesus" or something like that. And the camera just pans behind them. But um, I was wondering. I literally have this note saying, um, "Where is it?" Um, from. <laughs> Uh, do God damn it! I had it written there somewhere. Do do But uh, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the basement. Oof! What the fuck was she doing with him? I wonder. And I go, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> she was raping him. <laughs> yeah, I guess his pants were down. Uh, he everything is up. up. He is bruised to fuck around that area. Yeah, uh, he's like fully limp, dead. At first, I uh, thought know. it was. Wayne or because we find him kind of at the final girl circuit yeah they kill all the men first to kind of get them out of the way especially knowing that one of them was ex-military mm-hmm. um it, it, ooh, even his kill was kind of like oh, shit. oh that was so hard uh, yeah. and, like watching that he even says like when he when the guy comes down which I love the prosthetic dick but uh, when he comes in, he goes, like, what have you got the gun there for if you're just looking for your wife? And he goes, like, oh, she got, I found her down by the lake it's once. There's the gators. I've got yeah. a buckshot, whatever. He's like, okay, let they me go get my skivvies on. Yeah. And then they go get the flashlights and they but, go down. It's like he thinks that the old man has been gobbled up by one of the gators. Because he's like, what are you doing in there? Because he, like, goes <laughs> into the water and picks up the Yeah. The and you think a gator is going to get him. Yeah. Yeah, but I wonder no. whether or not they were going to use that at all in this movie because they kind of set it up and I was like, you cannot have, you cannot show me You can't gators. have a MacGuffin like that. Yeah, you can't yeah. show me gators and not, and not give put me them gators. In there. Yeah. yeah. But I loved the kind of, because we get this weird dynamic between uh, Kid Cudi and the old man, mm. because they both served in wars, but both wars that were kind of... Uh, Separated by, what, 30? About 40, 40 years. years. Yeah. But then they're both wars that were looked <clears> back at as... Maybe America shouldn't be so proud of the Korean War or Vietnam. But they have this thing where he's like, we need flashlights. And uh, I think uh, Kid Cudi is like, or no, it's Howard. was like, we didn't have fucking flashlights in Korea. We were walking around in the dark. (coughs) You're doing a bit much for me. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I'm losing my mind here. 
so yeah, they're, they're, we kind of get this thing of like, I, I was in the military and we didn't use flashlights. We were out here in the dark, you know? So it's like all these like weird little tactics and shit like that, you know, it's kind of terrifying. And then just like the idea of just like strolling out out into the, the countryside at, at night or whatever, you know, it's scary Terrible. as fuck. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of jumping around in scenes in my head because we only saw this like two days ago, you know? But, um, yeah, I like that whole setup. Like, also, just surprisingly, there's no race shit in this. Yeah, Nobody that... calls out the fact that he's black or anything like that. Considering it's the 70s and it's an exploitation movie, you kind of just expect that. But, no, there's nothing. You know, there's always, like, a weird respect between Howard and Kid Cudi because it's like, ah, like you're a military man. Yeah. You know? Although, there was no respect because... Point blank shoots. You can't talk at all. Oh, what is going on? Point blank shoots the motherfucker right through the chest. Yeah, right here. Lifts the gun to like gun his is chest, like making contact with the chest. Boom! And the, yeah. fucker, <coughs> the fucker is blown right into the water. Uh-huh. That was like, fuck. Are you <laughs> going to be able to finish this? <coughs> no. So when he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so <laughs> take me seriously <laughs> but that's him that's him gone out of the movie we don't even get to find I, his body just, or anything like honestly I loved that because I loved seeing how far he went with the power of that gun yeah that was just fucking nuts to me and it came out of nowhere yeah it came out of nowhere and there's something so much scarier about kind of like I don't know there's like a weird primal thing oh, we'll get to Britney Snow next who I think I think this is my favorite death because I think it's the most terrifying. Um, she finds Pearl out on the lake or like out on the dock. Um, I think that was the word we were both trying to figure out earlier. <laughs> she's like out on the dock and again, she's so sweet because <clears throat> at this point, nobody knows anybody is dead yet. Mm-hmm. Like I think, I think it's literally Mia and um, Jenna that are the only ones to kind of be like, something's okay, up. something's going on. Like they're not under any illusion. Um, and Britney Snow, of course, until she fucking dies. But at this point, all the men have left, you know. Um, oh, no. Okay, so I'm getting all the scenes mixed up. So Jenna Ortega gets Wayne to help her go look for the boyfriend. Yes. And that's how he comes out. Oh, my God. And he comes out in these tiny little tiny whiteies. And he walks out into the night. Yeah, into the Literally barn. in tiny whiteies. Yeah, just this big man. <laughs> He's this big, big man. I love his line, though. Shut up, cheeseburgers. Go wander into traffic. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he's gone it. Yeah, he's gone it into the barn. It's weird. I feel like they're they very, very definitely cast him to be kind of a Matthew McConaughey yes. kind of type. He was on uh, Grey's Anatomy for a while. That's how Emma recognized Never him. Never watched it. But he get, neither the fuck did I. Like, I, it's emotional self harm. It's too much. <laughs> um, but like he kind of gives me yeah Matthew McConaughey with the kind of Texas accent he's always wearing that kind of cowboy hat but he's got this like like feathery Dallas hair Dallas Club <laughs> oh, God he's so beautiful are you gonna be okay or I'm what right. and the one thing I love is I literally know he's glory hold with a screwdriver yeah no it's a pitchfork is it no is it, there's three Two holes little... yeah but he only gets one there's three holes no there's not there's three we see, okay, so just a spoiler alert, we get to see, like, just because for context, we get to see that this is kind of her signature weapon. I feel like if they were going to sell a toy of Pearl, she would come with a pitchfork. Because <laughs> in the trailer for Pearl, where we see her using that pitchfork twice. Because he's looking out, he kind of hears, like, kind of, like, shuffling or whatever, like, on the outside of the barn. And there's three holes, which are very conveniently placed, I must say, uh, for her. <laughs> and he, um... I can't stop thinking about what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> he like looks at these oh, holes, whatever, man. and then it, it's it's weird. There's like this shot where we get to see kind of a shadow like go across yeah. them, and then he's just skewered to the face, but he's dead. Like when she goes back in with the pitchfork, he's already dead. I don't mm. think that's a double tap. I think he just is dead. And I love how smoothly that it goes in. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's of, not like it's yeah. Sh- just straight oh, in. Oh, the sound that it made. It's Again, it's so weird because all of this is happening like unbeknownst to anybody else. Because mm. nobody else has seen anybody get killed or is even kind of suspicious yet. Mm. You know? Because um, right at this time, uh, 
Brittany Snow would be going to see the grandmother. Yeah, because Jenny, is, Jenna Ortega is down is in the gap. basement. Not yet. She's gone up to the house because she's looking for him because the van is still there. So she goes up to the house and he's, oh yeah, and he's like, have you seen my wife? Also, I need, like, I haven't seen my boyfriend. So they're both kind of like, okay, grand. And he's like, go down to the basement. What a fucking idiot. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> but also, that? I think... Who does that? Again, it's kind of... It's I mean, 70s. the slashers, the 70s haven't been really invented yet, so... But basements have always been creepy. You yeah. Know, I wouldn't just get my ass down into some old man's basement. <laughs> but, like, she goes down and I kind of was like, oh, it's Grant. Like, it's fine. Like, he's just directing her, like, where to go or whatever. And then she just finds the body of someone else. Some random Because yeah. it's not the boyfriend... I don't think it's not there would have been blood all over the place not. yeah it's just this man who's tied up and I was like there's cock we got to see dick even though it's dead dick it's dick um, which is like kind of surprising anytime you see a male penis in the cinema like mm. not like just reference to not like I don't know a shape it's a penis right there last time I got to see a penis in the cinema was Midsommar oh yeah I had a red dick um <laughs> Yeah, she's just, she got her ass trapped down there. But also in my mind, I'm like, how strong? You're stupid, bro. But I'm like, how strong can this old guy be? Keep I would, I literally, like, he, he, like, <laughs> the reason, I still don't understand why she has been kept down there. Separate her from the rest of the group. Yeah, but why, though? Because, it, what do you mean, if why? They, like, no, because <laughs> I don't he's, fucking know what you mean. he's already killed. Yeah, but the, nobody else knows. This is her mm. first, um... This is her first clue that anything is suspect or sketchy. Mm. She just thinks that her boyfriend left her. She doesn't think that her boyfriend has been killed or that he's been injured or anything because mm. the van and everything is still there. So if she was to get out, she would immediately just go back to the rest of the group and go, these people are murderers. Okay, let's get the four of us that are left yeah. and go fuck these people up because we also have a gun, you know? But I think... It, it's, see, that's what I'm saying. It's very smart. They don't use... Like, they don't make it unrealistic. These old people are just being smart by getting everybody divided and conquered. Yes. You know, so you can do it one by one versus trying to take on multiple people at a time. Because they're old. They would be overtaken by mm. any of these young people if there was a couple of them at a time. Well, speaking of dividing and conquering, let's divide up Britney, Britney. Snow for, for different crocodiles. <laughs> so, Britney Snow, yeah, she finds um, she finds Pearl at the end of the dock. Mm. And, again, she's just being nurturing and sweet and wants to get her back to the house. Yeah. Um, no! No! Britney Snow is standing at the end of the dock. And, and then the old, old lady woman comes, out. comes up. Mm. Why is she at the end of the dock? I don't know. They're looking... I think at this point, everybody is looking for everybody now. This is kind of like where everything is starting to ramp up. We've reached Act 3, you know? Yeah. But uh, Brittany Snow is at the end of the dock. And at first, I don't think we can tell if it's Pearl or if it's Howard. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. old person, it's just in the white distance. hair. Yeah. Oh, it's so good, though. It's so creepy. Like, mm. we got a good few shots like that in this movie where people are kind of just creeping, you know? Um and yeah she comes up and she kind of like blocks her way and she's like right we need to get you up to the house yes like you're gonna be called like da 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 because it's literally the middle of the night oh and she just pushes her in yes she just pushes her straight in and Brittany Snow is like and she doesn't die straight away she's mm -hmm. like screaming the whole time so Brittany Snow is just getting like ripped she's apart. like still thrashing around yeah like, as I mean like I know that when alligators do feast they like roll and roll and roll and roll and roll yeah the death roll they pull you yeah. apart that's literally to separate limbs from body to make you die. No, for real, I always feel like that's like one of the scarier ways to go because it's so painful because you don't even necessarily die <coughs> unless they do it for like your head. You know, I've seen that a couple of times in a movie where people get rotated apart. But for some reason, I was like, it like stung a little bit more because she's like still screaming. She's mm. like still alive the whole time. I hate that, like that real corny little thing where I literally have to Gatorade <laughs> <laughs> and she goes um, you know I don't like blondes she goes cheesy I, I just wrote cheesy as fuck line but it worked I don't mind it because again it implies they've done this before yeah I, like it's not their first it isn't their first time at the rodeo um, don't fuck with me pornographers no 
fuck with me, fellas. <laughs> I'm begging you. Please, fuck me, fellas. It also does imply that, um, because it brings up the fact that she has the obsession with Mia's character because brown hair, all of that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, they had a little, like, spiritual moment earlier when we first, like, Mia comes out. Before Mia goes down to the lake, actually, she's standing there and she can see Pearl standing like that. And Pearl kind of, kind of waves, mm. you know? And then Mia even kind of, like, should I wave? Like, can you even see me kind of thing? Mm. Um, yeah. Where is but it? I did think that uh, is the fact that she may have lost, like, because Pearl is, like, into the whole... She was a dancer. Yeah, and, like, it implies that she lost roles to... She may have lost a role beforehand to a blonde-haired woman. You uh-huh. know what I mean? I.e., like, not Marilyn Monroe, but, like, the Marilyn Monroe archetype Type. at the time. Yeah. And that's why we so. get her doing her little dance or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, she's kind of like... And see, that's why I really thought she was going to be younger. Because mm-hmm. I'm like... Or she was going to, like, have some kind of regeneration or something by every time she kills. Because when we see her, she's so frail to the point where she kind of can't even move. Mm-hmm. And then she kills somebody and she's dancing. Moving, yeah. And like, like she's, she's not stiff or anything like that. Yeah. She is just kind of limber. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> uh, should we spoil it? Go for it. So Pearl is also played by Mia Goth. That which I just they didn't, didn't have Suspiria on this. I just didn't see it. Like I just couldn't. It Fake got to titties, everything. Yeah, and it looked great. Like yeah. there was no. I mean, like I knew these people were not played by old people just because of how they're played by young actors playing old people. Yeah, or they were old pe- older people with some kind of prosthesis because <coughs> they were like really decrepit. Yes, like almost like translucent kind of. But until the <sighs> credits came up. <sighs> It was good. Yeah. You know, she had five <laughs> inches. But um, yeah, until the credits popped up, I didn't know that Mia Goth played both roles. I was fully like, holy shit, no way. I knew that when... Uh, no, I didn't know about the, the old fella now. I still actually don't know which of the actors played him, but... No, that's not um, a dual role. Huh? That's not a dual role. Yeah, but who played it, though? Just a man. <laughs> but <laughs> it's when I didn't see Mia Goth... <clears throat> Sorry, no. When I didn't, when I seen Pearl, uh, mainly sort of uh, like hidden in shadow and things like that. And then I was listening to the voice. I was like, that kind of. It doesn't sound like me, a goth, but it does sound like someone younger trying to act older. I will give one thing that I like want to critique this on. Can't nobody in this fucking cast do a Texas accent? No. Mia Goth cannot do a Texas accent. Neither can Jenna Ortega at et al. It was bad. Yeah, she does. They do it in... I hate you! Okay, I hate you. <laughs> they... I never should have listened to you. It was bad. It was yeah, all over the place. Yeah, they do... Yeah, it was hokey pokey wishy wash talk talk. And Mia Goth is so nonsense. English in real life. Like, she's so posh and so, like, She's so also British. Brazilian. Yeah. Yeah, Mia Goth is Brazilian. By... Uh, uh, yeah. She's, yeah. She's, like, born and raised in, like, Britain. Like, middle sex or something. She's very British sounding. <clears throat> okay, old people sex. So what? I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's that horrifying. No, I... <laughs> Emma literally was like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Like, what? You've never... So the one you've thing never I... seen old people have sex before? Or older people have sex before at all? Like, what the fuck? So the one thing about it that I did think was absolutely hilarious was it was more so for uh, the female gratification than it was Be my dildo, gratification. Howard. Which was really interesting because most of the time when you have porn, it's more male gratification than it is female gratification. Yeah. And I thought that was such a fun take on it, where she was taking command of the situation, and she was like, "Whether well, you fuck die or your not, heart. I don't. F- yeah, I, I need to get a good I dick in me. I don't fucking care how. Yeah, because you can see at one point he's having sex with her. You can even see to that. She's having sex, with, or yeah, he's having sex with her, and she's like, Ugh, and like physically oh, pulls, pulls him. him. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. pulls him into her. Mm. So, uh, kind of, uh, allow kind of midsummer, kind of in that way where it's like you're not taking doing control. It right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, she's just using Harold as a dildo. Which I thought was so funny. <laughs> Fuck me, Harold! But at this point, Mia Goth is underneath the bed. Um, and we missed out one scene just kind of leading up to this. Still sex positive, though. <laughs> like, everybody is still asleep. That's what I'm saying. Mia Goth doesn't even know that mm. everything is happening. She cause, So Pearl comes into the room and gets into the bed with her. And is kind of... Ugh. When I say feeling her up, it doesn't feel like molestation. It feels just like a, I wish I could have Worship. this. Exactly, because yeah. she's kind of just feeling the flesh and kind of smelling her and 
all that kind of stuff. Um, so it just feels like Not a consensual worship. But if it, it like, yeah, like the worship of youth or the kind of longing for youth, which again kind of made it kind of sad. Like I don't, I don't feel it's so. I don't think it's just old lady evil, young people good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it is kind of like a fuck. Like, like you feel bad for Pearl almost. Yeah, you. Well, I do. Kind you of. sort of, uh, you sort of get the sense that it's it's very situational. It's not uh, specific just because like she's out to get these. It's like she has felt maybe like wasted years, and then yeah. she sees that royal up in her through Mia Goth. Exactly. Well, yeah, because it's like we actually. That, I think that's the reveal at the end. Yeah, where we see the the picture of Pearl when she was younger, but it it it's not just. Also played by Mia Goth, it's the same like person. Yes, like with the same freckles and everything. The freckles are like very, very distinctive. It's like one thing I like really noticed about the makeup. I thought it was really pretty. Yeah. Also, again, everybody in this movie is like bare skin, like just kind of clean skin and like a good eyeshadow. Mm. Like Mia, you even said at the start, you love the blue eyeshadow. It's I loved just, that. Just this garage it's store just, of eyeshadow. She looked like she got her finger freckles. and like just just a cream did that. frosted blue shadow and just like piles of freckles all over the cheeks. So when we started to get into that kind of at the end we're seeing that it it's not just also happened to be played by Mia Goth mm. it's like literally the same person that's where I started my mind started racing where I'm like is this a time thing exactly like what's the implication of yes. this you know um mm. or like how what's the significance of Mia Goth now in this movie mm. as um what's her freaking name that's a good question. As herself, just because it's is not it just mini or um, it's uh, it's something like that. It, it, it does begin with an M. Yeah, but <clears throat> Maxine. Maxine. Maxine there you go. Minx. Maxine Minx. Gorgeous name. Porn star name, but I love it. Oh, for sure. Um, I also have this thing. So when uh, Jenna Ortega's character comes back up out of the um, basement door, she's like freed. And I Why don't we get her it. crawling out from under the bed first? That's oh, so yeah, yeah. awkward. Yeah, she's just like birds out of the room um, of Howard's ass. Of Howard's ass just getting like forced into <laughs> forced into, into pe- vaginal penetration. But like, I feel like <clears throat> it's only creepy because Mia Goth is stuck under there, not because two old people are having sex. <laughs> it is weird. This whole thing is so predicated on, I think, Ty West, like. Uh, kind of hoping that you'll just be grossed out just because it's old people having sex and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that don't freak me out old people can be sexy too <laughs> no it's true like <laughs> and they're not grotesque old people they're just old people you see like it's 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 more so this kind of uh, it, I think young people have a disconnect with sex that only after a certain age like sex doesn't exist anymore you know what I mean? Well, yeah, um, I think it's once they find, uh, once somebody gets to an age that they don't find. I mean, I stopped sexually. fucking someone at 75, but you know. <laughs> My husband's 75th birthday. <laughs> you know, like, them, like all the way through their 74th and right stopped at 75. And then stopped at 75. <laughs> you know, think, uh, younger people have this weird notion that once they stop finding older people, or once they uh, like old people get to an age that they find not attractive anymore, that everybody just thinks that way. Yeah. Even old people. Yeah. You know, it's like old people are old. I don't think old people are like. They're not impotent. Yuck. They're not suddenly going to stop working. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like Howard can have sex. It's not that he like can't get it up or anything. It's that they think his heart won't be able to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. But again, like, get yourself an ear of corn, get a dildo, fill it with water, and put it in the freezer, Preach. girly. You yeah. can you can figure out plenty of fucking ways. Yeah, you have a hand. You know, ain't Strike nobody it here. It. You know what you're doing. That's thing you could do. Like, non contact masturbation. That. Just sit out there in the sun, just think about it real hard for a while. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love that scene though of Mia Goth just being like, girl. And just like crawling out from under the bed, but it's so slow and it's so tedious. <laughs> and she doesn't, she doesn't pull using her legs. She just pulls using her hands. Yeah, like, yeah it's like like when somebody falls out of a wheelchair. Yeah, like the rest of their body is just dead weight. Like she's I love just it. pulling herself up. But again, this is another moment where she gets out and she's about to leave, and then she hears Jenna Ortega, who I think oh, yeah, at this yeah. point is the yeah, she's the only one, other one left alive. Yes. Everybody yeah, else is this, dead this at this just point. them too. Yeah, because this film like literally wraps up. I think about maybe ten minutes later. Yeah, I think it's an hour even and less. forty or something like that. Yeah. Which again, I'm glad A24 knows what to do when they're doing what they do. Mm-hmm. We don't need a three hour long 
slasher. Slasher yeah. should be two hours max. They should just be fun. I shouldn't have to think about them too hard. And yeah, A24 just really delivered. But yeah, this is kind of... There's such the penultimate moments. Yeah. yeah. So the, oh, but Jenna gets her hand bashed. Oh, her fingers get... You get back like, down in that basement. That's the second time though. We've seen that now. She also had hand trauma in Scream. She got stabbed oh. right through the hand. Doesn't she like... I think she has like... The fingers are split two. at the top. Yes. Yeah. Like oh. they're, they're connected, but... Broken, broken but only yeah. kind of by flesh oh. like you feel like you could just pull it off yeah oh it's so good and yeah she kind of like beats her back down into submission into the basement but Mia Goth goes back and like <laughs> I don't know I just referred to her as Mia Goth like her whole name yeah, yeah, yeah but she goes back which I always appreciate in a movie you know and it, it's such a weird like kind of quandary you'd be in but like I feel like if I think like say we're all in a situation and I think I could genuinely help you and there's a genuine shot I'm gonna get you out but if you're in the basement and both of your legs are gone and you're on a hook oh you leave me yeah I'm also Jessica Biel in that movie she mercy <laughs> kills him but only by stabbing him in the stomach <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> that's so much worse <laughs> like that's just gonna take so much longer you know yeah. you cut your friend's throat and you hit it <laughs> <laughs> You know, I would expect you to not stab me in the back, but slit my throat. I'm gonna mercy kill you by way of a thousand paper cuts. Like what Ooh. the fuck, you know? <laughs> but this uh, scene to me was very Tarantino. This literal which and <clears throat> so oh, the escape. Yeah, because she grabs the axe again, another fucking MacGuffin, um, which was there for maybe five seconds. It's it's where his tools are though. It's she doesn't just find it randomly no it's no but that's what I mean like but it, you know the way because the shot lingered on the axe at the very beginning of the film I don't think I noticed that yeah it did so as they were going because it's left it's like edged into the wood by the door meaning yeah. that it was either dropped or it was thrown so um when she gets shot fully with buckshot right in the face oh my god and flies back into the house I loved it it was so it, Tarantino it was I loved so it. vicious it was yeah. just so like fuck and like that's the thing I really did know who it was going to come down to mm. because I think of both of these girls now as kind of being on par with each other aren't they the main posters just the no everybody got a poster oh everybody got a poster yeah everybody has an individual poster with the X in front of them but because they they were shown equally in the trailers Mm. so I wasn't sure how it would bag out yeah because I think of them both now as kind of kind of neck and neck in terms of reputation in the horror genre so it really could go either way I would probably fight more so for Mia Goth than Jenna Ortega but only because like I've seen Jenna Ortega in one movie well, now two movies, but well, see, I've seen her in like a bunch, movie. though. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm probably about the same. I think it's um, she's in that. She's actually currently on a horror show. She was in the new Scream. She was mm. in the Babysitter. Yeah, because she's up and coming. Yeah, and, she was in the Babysitter. And yeah, yeah. this, and they all came out in the last like two years or something mm. like that. And then for Mia Goth, I've literally seen her in. I think I've seen her in four roles, five <laughs> roles. Suspiria, this high life. And I still haven't seen a cure for wellness. But it's good. I Definitely know, watch it. Yeah, it's worth I think watching. that's her. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like her debut or something mm, like that. It's very. But yeah, good. I think people kind of view them kind of neck and neck. I almost feel like mainstream. I feel like you want audi- it. You want. People no, to I almost it. feel like mainstream <laughs> like, yeah. audiences would pick Jenna Ortega more because she's not so much of an art house darling. Oh yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a lot of what we've seen uh, Mia Goth from is, is art house. Is art house yeah. and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, I think they're kind of they were both kind of neck and neck for like who's it gonna be because I kind of both think I think of both of them as the kind of final girl type you know but um yeah I really couldn't tell where where it was gonna go but when she just runs out that door and it's so just like out of nowhere she just smacks right through that screen door and right back into the house she doesn't just fall back she flies back into the house yeah I I love it it didn't seem stunt-ish like I couldn't see the strings at all it just it looked like she was just do you know exactly what it gave me? Kill Bill 2. When she runs up to a Bud's trailer and she's shot through the chest. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Like she just got gut punched. Yeah. And she's just dead. Mm. I think we see a shot of her and her head is... Oh, her lips are she's gone. she's still alive. Yeah. She also didn't die. Yeah. Her whole face from like top lip up is gone. And we can see all her teeth are like shattered and broken. And oh. 
Poor love girl. It. Love it. And she, yeah, she's fucked. So then we're kind of in Final Girl circuit. Mm. But we don't get the Friday the 13th, her running around, finding all her dead friends. She just, she's only seen one of them die. So she only knows what happens to one of them. Mm. And she bucks it. Mm. She gets the fuck out of Dodge. They, I know that Howard, <laughs> rather unsatisfying. Howard dies to bits, bro. <laughs> he just... He just gets a heart attack and oh, slumps over. Oh, no, he gets a heart attack because Jenna Ortega's inanimate body goes, or something. Yeah. and scares the shit out of him. <laughs> and he just has a heart attack. And then, I yeah, it's obviously very symbolic that we're left with Mia versus Mia, mm-hmm. you know? But then, uh, this part is actually completely blank in my mind. I think so she like, just leaves. She, um, uh, uh, oh, fucking, uh, Mia goes to grab the keys. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, she picks up uh, Wayne's gun, but it's empty. It's a mother of pearl gun, by the way. And then Pearl picks up the shotgun, but she can't lift it. Yeah. So it goes. Oh over my her god! Hand, yes. And she flies right <laughs> out. And I love the way it it was mentioned at the beginning. That and it's her body. It's not Jenna Ortega's body in front of the door in the yeah. driveway, which is kind of she. Cool. Uh, or no, uh, Howard says at the beginning. Or no, uh, when he's down uh, with um, uh, Kid Cudi's character, saying like, "I'm afraid she might fall and break a hip." And yeah. what does she fucking do? Falls and breaks a hip. She literally cannot move, and uh, what's her name? Mia Goth, like, Mia Goth walks over Mia Goth, yeah. and then drives the fucking oh, truck really? over her. Yes. And not just like, oh, buh, 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 buh. it's like, it's cheaper to be the skull and triple in. taps. I loved it. It yeah. was so good. But I love the taunt that she does have. Um, like, I, I love the taunt that she has. Like, uh, as she dies, like you, will, you'll never be good. This blah 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 blah. <laughs> and I, I, I just love how vicious that is. Like right up until the point where, she, where she's screaming. Um, fuck you! I'm gonna be a star. I loved it. It was so good. But then it's it, this is the ultimate. At the end, I'm like fuck, because now Mia Goth is just gonna be completely implicit, and everybody's gonna think it's her. Yeah. Because everybody at this because it looks like home invasion. For real, everybody at this farm is dead, and she's the only one left alive, and she's now, uh, like, on the run. Like, I I wonder how they're going to pick that up. Mm. Because there is a planned sequel to this, too. Not just the prequel. Um, I feel so annoyed, though, because I made everybody stay for the after credit scene. That is Oh, that's why we sat there, yeah. (laughs) But they just didn't show it. Pissed me off, and I knew it was there. So, like, that's, like, one of the first things I did when I got home was look for the after credit scene. The one thing I did kind of get annoyed was that last bit of, like, uh, the preacher thing on the TV. It's your dad. Uh, no, I get that, but I was like, it just kind of never came into play. Why would it, though? Well, you see, now I had a thing, right? So hear me out on this. So she's the daughter. <clears throat> she's the daughter of the preacher. It didn't make sense, apart from what she said earlier regarding her past not being important. Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, the writers meant the same thing, uh, or I would have. It I don't would, understand what you mean. Okay, so what uh, she made the comment earlier when Wayne and her were collecting like food and blah blah, blah yeah. saying that uh, because your past doesn't like own you or it's not important and blah, blah blah, which I agree. Yeah, but um, the writers. But what if it did, though? <laughs> uh, no, but so so here's my thing, right? So you know the way Church Mass was very apprehensive about. Uh, doing what she was supposed to be doing and uh-huh, then because she didn't know it was going to be porn right my thing would have been wouldn't it be great to have uh, Mia Goth's character have sort of gone down that route and then do the porno we and don't then... know if she did it <clears throat> she might have I know but it, for the point of having that reveal at the end because it's so inconsequential to what's yeah. going on so I think if if they were going to have that reveal, why have it there unless it made sense as part of the plot or whatever? But it would have been a great uh, a great character uh, arc, if that makes sense, to have been as quiet as Church Mouse was, and then build up to it, get into it in the porno, dealing with it, loving it, enjoying it, and being That's too much part though. of that. Because then, like, it, no, but then I think you it's have, just a cool thing. Then you like... have the the power of Pearl shouting in her face, like, because what sh- what Pearl shouts in her face is like, "You'll never be good enough. You're never this. You're yeah. never blah." That uh, ca- would carry so much more weight to it as to why Mia Goth's character would be like, "I'll fucking double tap this bitch over and over again." 
um i i at least that's my opinion i think it does yeah. well if if they could have m- maybe just pulled that in a little bit more i don't but, know i think they're like I don't know. You fucking. I don't know. Maybe like, oh, maybe I'm reading into it though. a little bit, but That's like you know, so. Cause just because <clears throat> this preacher guy, we've seen him. Uh, kind oh, of he's on the, the TV and the radio. And the radio and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like the idea that he's like my daughter was lost to the devil, all this kind of stuff, you know. So I think I don't know. I think that's like enough because mm-hmm. I don't. Like, I think like unless you're gonna make the dad a character, like I actually have him physically like in scene or mm-hmm. like on set or whatever it is. I don't know. I like little little sprinklings in of stuff yeah. like that you know just because and now I'm kind of thinking of where can they go because we have a prequel and a sequel planned yeah we have a prequel filmed um, and that's basically just what the, the after credit scene was was just a trailer for Pearl yeah um, which I'll actually stick up on the Insta just because I think like <laughs> it's good yeah I think it like it's worth it but um, like where could they go mm. with the next thing you know I think kind of you make Maxine or Mia Goth, I think you make her Pearl, you have her try and fail or I don't know, I don't know you figure out a way, cause like, because you tied those two together so, so clearly you know, um, I think like, yeah, do something with that do something else, do my eyebrows <coughs> <laughs> um, one thing I do want to say is, I love those um, I don't know if you know this, but the transitions between two scenes where these true. like uh, flicking back and forth between one scene oh, and the next until it transitions I, yeah, I actually, to the next I scene. That. I thought, that was, I thought cool. that was so cool. It was very trippy as well, and I kind of was thinking, like, what are they going to do with this? I thought it was like it reminded me of how Star Wars did it, where they would like just a swipe. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and it made me think of that, and I was like, that's so cool. Where like it would flick very quickly and then the flickers would get longer and then, and then it would just transition and meet to the other side I loved that I thought it was so cool the way they filmed that that's usually kind of typical of how you would film and show something as if something is happening in somebody's head yes so you would show like what's really happening and what's happening in their head mm-hmm. but like I think we get it a couple of times where we'll get Pearl like making lemonade and then you get me a god like it's a flash of her in the lake like just a flash yeah and then more and then we get it yeah like how they meet up I thought that was very clever the other thing that I did think was really cool was the rising tension between um, uh, the, the porno shooting shots yeah. and the actual storyline that's going on at the same time so the one where I, I thought was really great was the scene in the barn where she goes like you don't want to get mad day and yeah. all that kind of thing I'll give you a ride whatever um, and at the same time you have the shots where um, the granddad is in the house and he's looking at the two lemonade glasses and he's like, he oh, figures it out. fuck, they and he figures it out. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, those those kind of two shots. And then the same thing where I think Mia Goth and Kid Cudi are fucking and then she turns around and uh, your, your one is there and like well, they're see, talking yeah, about she being... She kind of like looks over her shoulder and I don't know whether she actually sees Pearl there or not. Yeah. But she kind of stares at the window for a sec and then goes back to it. Mm-hmm. You know? Because um, it does that kind of very shining esque fade where it's suddenly old Pearl uh, with with but with in that uh, same kind Mia of makeup on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt so bad because she went up and she like she did the mm. the blue eyeshadow and I was like, oh, yeah, you look pretty. But like, I love that in the middle of this because it's kind of not a horror movie for the first like thirty five minutes or something. Yeah. We get it's very um, much a character study of like is, love people it. in this era. Exactly, I feel like that's where the new Texas Chainsaw and Texas Chainsaw in general could be helped is if we get twenty minutes or so before they get on the road, and then you kind of give a shit about you mm. give more of a shit about them. They're not just cannon fodder. They're not just I'm meat be or whatever. A fucking star. But I love um, <clears throat> in the middle they're kind of talking about Psycho about how Psycho was kind of a piece of shit and all this kind of stuff, and it's like. And then they switched it up, and then it became a horror picture. It's like I I love anything like meta like that. That yeah. isn't too like wink wink nudge nudge. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. I thought this movie was just like it just it just so well researched and just yes. so well like uh, it pulls on good references without just being without beating you over the head with it. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's what I like. I think um, I'm looking forward to how slashers are going to kind of 
evolve unfurl in the next couple yeah. of years because I'm sick of paranormal shit mm. I'm fucking over it I think I think if we go Ghosts back to boring. if we go back to our roots much better for real just like yeah exactly just like watch a couple of movies it was fun watch a couple <laughs> of movies and take what's actually good you know take like the base level part that's actually good and then put your own like building blocks on top of it yeah you know it's like I think we've found that just making another Texas Chainsaw is good because nobody likes any of them except for the first and second. I don't even think people like the second, but I like the second. The second one is great. Well, I don't give a fuck. The last thing I really had a note for with this movie was the soundtrack. Yeah. I loved the fact that most of the soundtrack is made up of moans or groans or. See, I think we need to differentiate between score and soundtrack. Because we have a lot of okay. diegetic music also, which is just music that's happening. Like, the music that characters can hear. It's not just... Oh, no, I, I firmly mean, like, <clears throat> those so scenes where Mia Goth very... is, like, in the lake, and all you can hear is that... Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, like all that kind of thing in the background, I think that's... And that's not, like, because, like, the porn is being shot five seconds away from her out of frame. No. That's literally the original score... Yeah, like when no with sex happens, moans happening, still and moans groans and, and grunts. There was even grunts. There was male grunts yeah. in part of that soundtrack that I was thought like, "Fuck, that's so fucked up," but I love it. Yeah. It's so good. It's yeah, so good. We do get a lot of diegetic music as well. Music that's in scene, mm. like that characters can hear and interact with. But like we were kind of saying at the start, I'm glad we didn't just get like a look up a '70s playlist on Spotify yeah, and yeah, take yeah. the first top ten because they're like we've heard all of those now in every Marvel movie in any James Gunn movie or any sh like Zack Schneider movie yeah. or anything like that it's like I'm fucking sick of hearing the same like I'm glad we didn't get like Come and Get Your Love or any of that shit oh yeah because it's okay. so overdone yeah yeah you know there was literally like an, like just an untapped amount of music in the 70s yes. and 60s yeah. also just because the music or your movie is set in the 70s doesn't mean you only have to play 70s music yeah true you have a lot of 60s music. yeah exactly <clears throat> you know that always actually pisses me off in movies that like things are so time specific mm. it's like like even now it's like well, why are we only listening to 70s music yeah just jump around yeah you can have plenty of other things 70s were badass, definitely be just 70s music but I can also see why because 70s was also like the huge summers of love and all of that type of thing so it's, it's very so there's yeah. plenty of other shit you can do make your own fucking music true that you is know, also have true have some like actual like original score for stuff you know so give it out of 10 um <clears throat> Oh my god! <laughs> Honestly, I would say, I would say like an eight or a nine. I would give it a, an eight. I think I could have done mm. with maybe like one or two more kills, or the kills yeah. could have been a little bit more explicit. But yeah. um, I mean, they could have been the X. <laughs> but like, other than, I actually wonder, will we get like an unrated cut for this? Because I, I, I like would cut, say, I think they kind of threw everything that we had. Well, like, because in America like, that was rated R, and here it's only eighteen. That's the same thing. Is it? No. Yeah, X is like like explicit. Like mm. you can't just. I think X is like NC seventeen, where like you can't just go it because it's weird. All of these like writings and stuff, they're not law. Yeah, they're actually they're not suggestions. Law. Exactly. Mm. Like I at fifteen, fully was like like wanted to go see the new Predators movie. Like, but I think Predators was like the third one. Me and my friend Robert went in or whatever like that, and they were like, "Have you got ID or whatever?" And it's like. No, I want my ticket. I'm like, I'm not fucking, like, this isn't a law. <laughs> like, you can't arrest me for this, you know? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. These assholes. I want to see many predators. <laughs> I'm so hyped I want to see predators beat each other up. I'm so, like, excited for the new Predator movie, though. Yeah. It's called Prey. It's set in, like, uh, like pre-colonial America. That sounds, like, fucking dope. It sounds good as fuck, though. I, I will say, the only reason why, now, the only reason why I'm knocking is purely just because of that 24 hours later thing at the beginning I don't think we needed it I don't mind it we got it in Texas Chainsaw as well yeah yeah <laughs> but like I don't know I don't. it doesn't distract too much I almost thought they were going to do more with that police investigation yeah I thought we were going to get it kind of because even at the end when they find the camera or whatever he's like what's on like what do you think is on this it's like I bet it's one fucked up horror picture yeah yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And I'm like oh I wish there was kind of like more of that, but also all they filmed was two sex scenes. There's nothing on there. There's just people fucking. Yeah, <laughs> you know? but also like the, the the van cock scene. The which? The van cock scene with the with the um. 
Uh, oh, uh, yeah, f- yeah, him filling the thing. Filling up the tank, yeah. Also, I do just want to say, just quickly before we go, because we kind of didn't speak much about uh, Kid Cudi, who, like, I love. I'm, like... I'm, Day like, and night. I'm so happy that he's, like, becoming, like, more of a thing now, I guess, because I feel like he was kind of was... I don't want to say, like, underground again, but, like, mm. he's becoming a star. <laughs> like, he was just in uh, the new uh, Bill and Ted movie. I never actually, watched like, that. Did you like any of the other Bill and Ted movies? Well, I've seen the original. Oh, they're so good. Well, so, I so want to say the first, because it's not an original and a remake. It's just It's like, first. yeah, just Bill and Ted, excellent adventure. Mm. It's the bogus adventure, where we get death. I've seen adventure. bits of that one, but I think the, the that just good. the just go on an adventure is the one I've seen. They're kind of wacky, but also I had such a crush on uh, Alex Mentor as a kid. He's the the smaller lost boy, you know. But so yeah, next week, quick, but just real quickly, just oh, real okay, quickly, like the fact that like uh, Kid uh, Cudi uh, produced uh, this, uh, okay, <laughs> but like the fact that Kid Cudi like produced this, I'm like fuck yes, like this is what I want to see more of, like actual independent movies. You know, I don't want to see an uh, independent movie, like, made by Universal. Because then yeah. that's not independent. It's like A24, I feel like it's... St- well, actually, no. A24 is now, like, a several billion dollar company. But we always forget they're just the, uh, the distribution company. They don't yes. actually make anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the idea that they... <clears> if they put their... Yeah, sure, their name to distribute it. that. It's got a certain vibe. It's got a certain quality. Yeah, it's there's a, a level of expectation level of that you have. It. Yes. Exactly. But it's I the know. same with um, uh, with how uh, like punk. <clears throat> I think we were saying it earlier. Ah, yes, how... punk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how punk was uh, customized for things like the runway, and inherently, when popular culture takes it on, it inherently sanitizes it. So, like, um, it's the same with like like drag culture. So, like, it would be the same with a twenty four. Like, if a twenty four gets as big and big and big and big and big. It inherently loses. I don't think so because it's overtime. just a filter that movies like just go through because mm. they kind of have nothing to do with anything. It's just what they choose to put their name to, mm. you know, because they're not a universal. And no, to be fair, I've style. yet to be disappointed. Yes, yeah, st- I've yet to be disappointed. I also haven't ventured outside of A twenty four horror much yet, though. Uh-huh. Like I haven't uh, seen the Florida Project. Or like under the Silver Lake, like much of Green the like, drama stuff, which people still kind of classify as horror. A uh, Green Room, yeah, I would definitely classify that as horror. It, yeah, that is terrifying. horror, borderline thriller. That's the all the skinheads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, they yeah. go to the like the Nazi, um, fucking like uh, whatever Nazis do. Thing. <laughs> oh, that uh, Nazi yeah, shit, yeah. and it like goes south because they walk in on some chick that was murdered or some shit. And they're just like, oh fuck, we gotta. Hey, kill don't tell now. me everything. I haven't fucking. No, seen it's it. in the trailer. <laughs> I also haven't watched the trailer. Um, Imogen Poots is in that though. I yeah. like her. She's yeah, in the yeah, Friday yeah. remake. Love it. Which I also want to cover one of day. I like. I want to cover the original. Andrew she plays movie. a skinhead in it. Yeah, but she yeah, got, yeah, yeah. she got the Chelsea cut. Yeah, like, yeah, just the fringe. I yeah. love that. I did so, see one thing. Somebody gets their hand like fucked up through a door, but like, uh, that's, that's all I know. That's the only. Oh, thing I've seen so, you just suddenly threw me back into that movie. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I, was, like, I think there's a dog or something. I don't know. I've only seen like very very. Oh small man, we're gonna review that movie. You're gonna, you're gonna fucking love it. So so next week, um, I don't think we're giving you guys a choice this month. Yeah, no, we're not. We're not really choosing agreed anything. Upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Duh. I'm gonna pick next week because yeah. you have to pick a whole. It's your, month, yeah, bitch. yeah. <laughs> okay, I am gonna pick. We're gonna watch the Toxic Avenger. I'll get fucked. <laughs> we're gonna go to trauma. I literally can't. I don't I, care. I just. I will. F- this is this is a movie that I'll have to force myself to watch. Why? Because I can't. I. You know what? I studied it. <laughs> I I got the certificate, and you know what I found out. You're I a pussy. What, because they <laughs> run over a child's head? It's no, not real. I just can't, because it's so fucking awful. It's trauma. We could do, exactly! So we could do Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead, also by trauma. Where a dude gets his, like, ass, like, split open by a zombie in the opening scene. That movie. Okay, yeah, no, um, submit it. Uh, we're, gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna do the Toxic Avenger. Ah! <sighs> Okay. That'll make sense when you watch the movie. I'm not just yelling for nothing. <laughs> God, I hate that pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> You've been listening to They're, They're Here, Here Podcast. Podcast. Make sure to like. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I've always wanted to do this.
Oh my god. <laughs> they just listened to like six seconds of you messing with the microphone. Uh huh. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe. <laughs> oh. do, are you, do you want to chill up your ass? I just pulled my own hair. So. Uh, so make sure thin. to like, subscribe, um, follow us on Instagram for some daily updated content. All that and, good stuff. Uh, away we go. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Grease reference? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>